Good evening to all the attendees here in India and uh, good morning to Ms. Alice Schaaf from Transylvania University. Thank you very much for joining us for the Admissions 101 uh, Knowledge at KPD uh, workshop series. We truly appreciate your kind time and support. I know it's very early in the morning. So thank you so much for joining us. To all the students, we know it's late in the evening for you. You probably must have been done with your classes or and done with all your coursework for the day. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, as the outreach email has shown, uh, when we had sent it out to your school counselors and also to your school, uh, we have Ms. Alice Schaff from Transylvania University, who will be presenting on the session topic, uh, writing the US application essay, and specifically how it differs from UCAS. Uh, Ms. Schaff will obviously be walking you through the topic and also sharing along the way information about her institution. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over the stage as well as the microphone and mute myself. And uh, thank you, Miss Alice, for joining us. It's an immense pleasure having you. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Kanal. And thank you all for being here. I know it's, it's so hard to always be on your computer and be staring at a screen all the time. Um, but I appreciate your time here. And I hope that this session will be practically useful for you, that you could walk away from this um, and take a break from your screen and then have some ideas and be able to generate um, some essays that will really, really help you feel confident about your application process. Uh, my name is Alice Schaff, as Mr. Kunal said. Um, I am the Assistant Director of International Recruitment for Transylvania University. Transylvania University is a small private liberal arts university right in the middle of Lexington, Kentucky, and Kentucky is in the middle of the eastern part of the U.S. So I'm not going to tell you too much about my university right off the bat. Um, the reason that I like talking about essay writing is because of the way that we do our admissions process. And so I'll sort of be explaining some of that and explaining about my university as we go through this. My background about this topic and why I love to talk about essays, and I know you're probably rolling your eyes and thinking, oh, who likes to talk about essays? But um, I spent almost 20 years as an English teacher in high schools, in secondary schools, and I taught in the US and at international schools. And uh, then I moved into university counseling. So then I, I was going from teaching essay writing to supporting students as they wrote essays for their applications. And I had many students applying to the US, but also to UCAS. And that's where we had a lot of discussions about the difference between these two very important personal statements, personal essays that you have to write for each one. So, um, so today, that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to focus mostly on what US universities are looking for, because that seems to be um, to raise a lot more questions. And, and frankly, there are not as many uh, specific answers to what U.S. universities are looking for as there are for UCAS. So we'll kick it off with whoop, UCAS. Um, for the UCAS system, you're applying through one portal to five universities. Most of you know this, you're probably familiar with this. You're going to be applying to five universities and all five will be reading the same personal statement. And when you apply to universities in the UK, they really want to know what program you're applying to specifically and why you are a good fit for that program. Your personal statement is very much you selling yourself, you promoting yourself as, as an ideal student for their, for their program, for the course that you're interested in. So your personal statement shares with them all of your experience with, say, physics and, and the things you've read about and the experiments you've done and the classes you've enjoyed and the lectures you've attended. UCAS is very specific about what they want from their personal statement. In fact, they make it very, I'm going to say, I'm going to say easy, but I've already told you I like to write and teach writing. So they make it very clear what they're expecting from you as an applicant. If you go to UCAS.com, and it's on my screen here, there are brainstorming guidelines. They have a mind map for you so you can start brainstorming ideas. There's a wonderful video from um, an application reader exactly what she's looking for and what she expects. There is um, what they call a worksheet for drafting the statement. UCAS tells you exactly what they want in your introduction paragraph, in the body of your statement, and in your, in your conclusion paragraph. They do want to know about you. They want to know about what, what makes you tick, but it's all very much directed towards that course that you're interested in applying for. 
Um, the reader for your UCAS personal statement is often either a specific admissions professional who is very familiar with the course and works closely with that course, or it might be a faculty member who's literally saying, "How? What is this person going to be like in my classroom? What are we going to What are we going to talk about? Um, are the same things that I'm interested in the same things that they're interested in, and and, and how are our, our ideas going to to work together? Um, so so that's a very specific audience, and it's it's good to know all those things. UCAS is very clear. Um, they're, they're not interested in trying to throw up barriers to keep you out. They really want to help you do a good job. And it's lovely that the, the entity that's asking you to write the statement is also helping you do such a great job. We are also interested in you doing a great job and hoping to help you with that. But as you've probably learned as you're doing some research about U.S. application processes, Every one of us can, can and does tend to do something different. We all have different application deadlines. We all have different application tick lists for what we expect from you. So even though we have the common application, and that's mostly what I'm going to be talking about today because it is, you know, an easy reference point. Um, we don't necessarily all, all use the common application or we use the common application in different ways. Some US universities use the common application but don't require an essay. So you wouldn't even have to worry about writing the essay. Or if you write the essay for other universities and apply through the Common App, they might not read your essay, but the rest of us will. So the, the, the biggest difference between the US Common Application Essay and the UCAS Personal Statement is that the Common Application Essay is almost more of a creative writing piece. We want you to tell us a story. Now granted, the, the UCAS Personal Statement does tell us a story about you and your love of physics and your interest in physics. But for the US Common Application Personal Essay, we wanna get a little bit further into you personally, maybe, your, your likes, your dislikes, um, what you do outside of class, what makes you tick, what you, what you love to do. We are trying to, and certainly for an institution like mine, we are quite small, we have fewer than a thousand students. We really wanna know all these personalities that are coming to campus. What are you going to be like in the classroom? What are you going to be like outside of the classroom? Um, what will you be like in the gym, in the cafeteria, in the halls of the dorms? That's all very important to us as a small university and we're right in the middle of a city and so our students are very involved in, in the community around us as well. So when we are doing our application processes, we are very much looking for, for a new community member. What, what are you going to be like? How are you going to contribute? Um, and how can we help you contribute? Um, as part of our process, for, certainly for international students, I am the only international um, application reader. So quite literally for Transylvania University, I am your audience for your common application essay. Um, so that said, I'm a pretty easy audience because I love to read stories. So we are just looking for something that tell, gives us a little more information about you. You'll notice the second bullet says it might never mention the subject for which you are applying. In fact, as you probably know, for US universities, you, most of them, you can apply undecided. So it would be difficult to write an essay about the course you're applying to when you don't really know yet, and that's absolutely fine. Some universities do want you to apply directly into a course, and in that case, there is a supplement for each university that's part of the common application application. And in that supplement, they will ask you, you know, what course are you applying for and why are you interested in that course? Completely separate. Um, I am your audience. Uh, we're not, not going to, it's not usually going to be read by a faculty member or someone who is specific to the course that you're, that you're applying for. Um, I, read all of them, whether you're applying, you're interested in physics, you're interested in international relations, you're interested in the Spanish major. Um, I, I will read all of your, your application essays and all of your applications. So I, I just love doing that and I, I enjoy learning about the individuals. Again, like the UCAS, um, you are gonna be applying to multiple universities through the common application. And as the personal essay is part of the common part of the common common application. Like I said, there are supplements that are university specific, but the common part of the common application has this personal essay and all of us will read that. So make sure that you don't mention how much you love Transylvania University and you can't wait to attend 
um, if you are in fact also applying to other universities. So save that for, we'll talk about how you can tell me how much you love Transylvania um, later in this presentation. We don't have quite the structure of the UCAS personal statement. We're not expecting, um, you know, a, a introductory paragraph body statements and then a conclusion paragraph that is very clearly delineated in the UCAS personal statement. We're looking for you to tell a story. And so some people start out their stories in different ways and, and it's completely up to you. And again, you're thinking right now, oh, I don't even know how to start. Don't worry, we're gonna, we're gonna cover that. So we are interested in you telling us a story, which you do every day and which I know you are good at, but we also need to see through this story that you are prepared to be a university student. So please check your spelling, check your grammar, make sure that your sentence structure is, is comfortable and readable. So it has to be formal, but it still has to sound like you. Bottom line, what do we want? We want to know who you are. We want to know that you can write. And we want something that's going to give us a little more information than the other parts of your application. So the other parts of your application file for Transylvania and other holistic universities um, are your transcripts from high school, your test scores. We are test optional uh, for native English speakers, but um, some universities will require an SAT or ACT. Um, we will ask you for a letter of recommendation from a teacher or counselor, sometimes both. And so we are getting all of these different pieces of information. We're going to ask you about the activities that you've done both inside school and outside school in the last few years of your high school life. So all of these pieces together are, are going to, to give us an idea of you, especially because ideally we would love students to visit a campus, visit our campus, but no one can visit our campus right now, which is unfortunate, and I can't come visit you. So this is a wonderful way for us to, to get to know you. Please note the, the, uh, the last sentence here on the screen, um, the italicized, an essay alone will not get you into university, but poor effort or questionable taste can keep you out. All right, this is not rocket science. It takes effort. You cannot do this the last 30 minutes before the application is due. Just like any other assignment, I know that, that high school students, uh, in my experience, are very deadline driven um, and not necessarily looking to work well ahead of the deadline in bits and pieces, as, as we often recommend. But um, please do start thinking about it. You're obviously thinking about it by being here now, and that's wonderful. So just getting, that, get the, getting the gears turning is one way to, to tackle this essay. Um, Again, we're looking at so many different factors when we look at your application. The essay is just one piece of that. Now, this next paragraph is quite important. After you get done with this presentation, hopefully you'll have some, some uh, direction and, and some answers, but you might also be tempted to go online and Google or search um, the essay that got students into big name university please don't do that. That essay has already been written. That story has been told. That is that student's story. You are going to tell us your own story. So all that that might do for you is make you think, oh, I can never write an essay like that. Well, of course you can. You just have a different story to tell and you're gonna tell it in your own way. Uh, we don't expect everybody to send us the same application. That would be horrifying. It would, be, <laughs> it would be, make my job very difficult. So if you do decide to use a guidebook or some online sources, that's great, but just keep in mind that you need to stay authentic to your own voice. Okay, what are you going to do when you stare at that blank screen? Now, if you've got, if you like notebooks, if you like writing on paper, this is a great time to do that for brainstorming. I don't want you to just start writing the essay. Don't ever do that for this, for this purpose, or basically for any essay. Take that blank page and make it not blank by just putting words in. What do you like to do? How do you spend your time? Um, make a bullet, make bullet points, make a list, make an outline of some kind. Um, I'm never going to see that. Um, so just get some ideas out there. Interview your siblings, interview your, your aunties and uncles and, and ask them, what, what do you think I should write about? They're going to remember stories about you that you have either decided not to remember <laughs> or, or maybe just have completely forgotten. 
and um, they're a great source at this point for, for generating some ideas. Um, there's a bullet here that says, what are the things that truly matter to me? And I think a lot of that has been coming up these days, um, certainly with the, the global pandemic and issues over racism uh, across the world. Um, there are so many topics that, that are touching everyone and you know, I know you're thinking about those. So, so again, we're gonna look at all of the questions that are posed for you in the common application essay prompts and, and we'll cover how you can address some of those issues if you want. We're not looking for your entire life story. We're not looking for your entire story of your life with physics. Remember that was the UCAS statement. What we're doing here is trying to put a spotlight on one piece of your life. So sometimes students um, that I worked with went on a wonderful journey, a wonderful trip at some point, and they wanted to write about that trip. Well, they wrote about it and it became a travelogue. On day one, we did this. On day two, we did this. On day three, we did this. What we'd like you to do instead is focus on one aspect of one day of that trip. What was one thing that really stood out to you, um, your interaction with people, or getting to know your parents better when you're traveling with them, getting to know your siblings better when you're stuck in the backseat of the car. Um, give us a, 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 that piece, just one little piece that we can sort of um, start building that, that idea of you. We know that you're a human being and we want, to know, we want to know about you and we want to know about your personality. Um, you are going to, we're going to do this together in a second. We're going to look through each one of the, the essay questions that are offered in the Common App essay, but you'll also notice that they're all fairly general. So you could actually come up with a topic now and, and you might already have one like, oh, well then that, I could write about this. And you can make it fit just about any topic in um, the, the questions that are offered in the Common Application. Um, your topic does not have to be about climbing Mount Everest. It doesn't have to be about finding a cure for cancer. Um, it just has to be you. It does say maximum 650 words. We would urge you to not do like 649, um, but do write your first drafts, not worrying about word count. It's much easier to just get it all out there and pare it down later, um, but don't keep thinking, oh, I only have 100 more words or, or I only have 50 more words. You know, you could write a great essay that's, that's 500 words or 450 words. It's about quantity, not about quantity. It's about quality, not quantity, right? I guess you hear that a lot from your teachers. All right, here we go. I'm going to do something that you're not supposed to do in a presentation. I'm going to read you this whole screen. And we're going to talk about each one and what, the, uh, what you might be able to do with these questions. Remember, every single one of you listening right now might pick the same prompt and every single one of you will write a completely different essay. And that's wonderful. Again, that's why I love my job. Uh, number one, some students have a background, identity, interest, or talent that is so meaningful they believe their application would be incomplete without it. If this sounds like you, then please share your story. There's that term story again, and that's what I've been asking you to do. So um, this covers a lot. Is there anything, and like it said, that your application is missing that we need to know about you? Um, your drum solo expertise, your ability to, to rollerblade uphill. What are some things that, that you're able to, to share with us that we haven't learned about you yet? Notice that all of these are gonna have that second person singular, you. What does this do for you? How do you think about this? How do you react? Number two, the lessons we take from obstacles we encounter can be fundamental to later success. Recount a time when you faced a challenge, setback, or failure. How did it affect you and what did you learn from the experience? We're not asking you to tell us a story about the time you won the championship. You worked hard, your team won, everybody was happy. Um, the more interesting story and the one you see in movies and books and the reason that they are made into movies and books is because it is a more interesting story. What happens when you work hard and, and you don't win that championship or the team falls apart at the last minute? What happens? How do you handle that? How did you pull through and, and what happened next? Um, I had one student who wrote um, a, a wonderful essay about her softball team in high school and how they lost every single game. But it wasn't a story about the team losing. It was a story about the team and how they loved their teammates and they enjoyed the, and they always got sportsmanship awards from other teams because they just had so much pure joy in the sport. Number three, reflect on a time when you questioned or challenged a belief or idea. 
what prompted your thinking, and what was the outcome. Now students, when they read this, often go straight to religion for the belief or idea. But keep in mind, especially right now, you've got a lot of um, examples in, in current events. Beliefs or ideas might be some sort of community norm that, that you have challenged or questioned. It might be a rule at school. It might be something within your family. What are some questions that you, when you're like, it seems like we've always done it this way. What if we did something this way? Um, so again, we want to hear about you. So you can talk about a larger belief or idea, but how did you handle it? How did you challenge it? Number four, describe a problem you've solved or a problem you'd like to solve. It can be an intellectual challenge, a research query, an ethical dilemma, anything that is of personal importance, no matter the scale. Explain its significance to you and what steps you took or could be taken to identify a solution. Now here's where you might be able to borrow from, if you're applying to both UCAS and the US, you might be able to borrow from your UCAS statement about your love of physics and, 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 and your deep dive into a physics question. Now, I was an English major, so I would not know about having deep dives into physics questions, but lots of people do. So tell us about that. Um, this could also be something like, this might overlap with question number one, that background identity, interest, or talent, uh, that might be something that's a question you've been working on or looking to solve for a long time. So you'll notice that a lot of these overlap uh, and they're very general. These are just sort of to help you um, generate some ideas and some, some thinking about what are stories you can, you can share with us. Number five, discuss an accomplishment, event, or realization that sparked a period of personal growth and a new understanding of yourself or others. So again, this one might sort of overlap with number three when you challenged a belief or idea, it might sort of overlap with number two. Um, it says an accomplishment, so that sort of makes us think mm, that I have to have achieved something there. But it might be something you were aiming to do and, and realize that you couldn't do it, and here's why, and you're going to try it again. And, you know, we just, we want to learn about you, your thought processes. What happens when, um, when your experiment literally blows up in chemistry class? Uh, what happens next? What do you do? How do you pick up the pieces? Um, other than your teachers telling you to pick up the pieces. <laughs> so number six, describe a topic. Oh wait, something I forgot for number five. And this one specifically says a new understanding of yourself or others. So this might overlap with, you know, a trip in the car with your family and learning something. Maybe you discover that your parents actually do know what they're talking about once in a while, or that your siblings are not quite as annoying as you thought they were. So your learning process about other people helps us understand you. Um, so that's one way that, that you can sort of share yourself with us. Now we'll do number six. Describe a topic, idea, or concept you find so engaging that it makes you lose all track of time. Why does it captivate you? Who or what, sorry, what or who do you turn to when you want to learn more? Again, you can borrow from your UCAS personal statement if this is about a subject, um, a school subject or a course that you're interested in, in pursuing in, at university. We certainly understand that you might not have had as many opportunities to do deep dives into multiple subjects in high school like you can at, at university. So, you know, what are some things you're looking forward to studying? What are some questions? And I, I like that, that caveat of losing all track of time. Uh, for me, that's reading, but, but what happens to you, what is it that, that you like that deep dive into and, and suddenly you come up and you're like, oh, I, I missed lunch, which never happens to me. I always make lunch. Um, number seven, here's another one that, that made my former students um, think that they could just swap in their UCAS personal statement. Share an essay on any topic of your choice. It can be one you've already written, one that responds to a different prompt, or one of your own design. It's gonna be really, really, really tempting because you're gonna be short of time. You have so many things to do. You're applying to different universities in different parts of the world. Um, you're trying to finish up your own work for you know, home. You're doing your chores at home. You're taking care of your siblings. You're doing your homework for school. It's gonna be really tempting to say, well, hey, I got an A on this essay for English, analyzing tests of the Durbervilles. I'm just gonna send them that. It's a great essay, I got a good grade on it. Um, they said I could send anything I want. Um, but keep in mind that your in-depth analysis of chapter two of Tests of the Durbervilles is not gonna tell me anything about you and about, it's gonna tell me that you can write and that's great, but it's not gonna help me understand more about you and it's not going to help your application become that three-dimensional representation of you. 
in the common part of the common application, you have three opportunities for essays. The first opportunity is the personal essay that we just talked about. The second opportunity is the additional information essay. And the prompt for that is, do you wish to provide details of circumstances or qualifications not reflected on the application? You're going to have a place on the application to write your extracurricular activities, but it's, they're fairly short spaces. It's, it's really going to end up being a very short CV. Um, so if there's anything, you know, if you uh, achieved a, a black belt in, in karate um, that you want to share that process with us, but it wasn't something you wanted to write about in the main essay, but it was important enough to you that you spent all this time on it, you could throw that in here. You do not have to write, again, a 650 word additional essay. This is literally just a brief additional information. Maybe you had um, a blip in your transcript, you broke your leg uh, two years ago and your grades kind of bloop and then went back up again. Um, that happens. Just give us a, a little bit of insight into what happened there um, so that we can move on, so that we don't have questions about that when we read your transcript. Um, you do not have to write anything in this section. So many students are gonna see, oh, there are three essays here, I need to write all three of them or I'll get dinged. You won't. The main, the, the one you need to do for universities that ask for an essay is the common application personal essay. This is literally additional. Talk to your counselors about whether or not you really need to do something for this space. Um, new for this year's Common App, no big surprise, is a chance for you to write about how the COVID pandemic has affected you. Um, you might have gone straight to a, a COVID pandemic topic when you were looking at some of those, the one through seven options um, for the, the, the main essay. But if you don't want to address it there, but you feel like you still want to address um, challenges that, that you've come through or are still dealing with, of course, um, then there is a chance on the new application, on the new Common App essay to, um, to address that as a third essay. The common application itself will not open until August 1st of 2020, but right now the essay prompts are out there. So this is something you can be thinking about. Do I need to add any additional information? Do I want to talk about, you know, the COVID pandemic? Again, we, we're encouraging you to tell a story no one else can tell. So um, in, in whichever of these essays you answer. Um, and again, you might check with the universities, uh, all of the universities that you're working with have a counselor like me that you can reach out to, um, ask them if they have any expectations for, for the COVID specific essay. Outside of the common part, so all of those three essays, the, the, the personal essay, the um, additional information essay, and the COVID specific essay are all on the common part of the common application. We are all going to see those um, no matter how many uh, applications you send through the common application. Now, I would recommend you only send about five to eight. Don't do more than that. You can only go to one university, do your homework ahead of time. Uh, okay, advertisement over. Now, um, the supplement for each university is um, we, we can ask you as many additional essays as we want. Some universities will ask you 12 additional essays just because they can. Um, we want to know why Transylvania. We know that we are small. We know that you've probably never heard of us before. Um, and we are, we feel that we're unique. We are the 16th oldest university in the US. We are the oldest university west of the mountain range, the Appalachians that, that runs down the east coast of the US. So how did you find us? Why did you find us? Why are you interested in applying to us? Um, we are smack in the middle of our city. And like I said, we are quite small. So how are you going to, to fit in that community? What can you imagine us doing for you? Um, take a look at some of our programs and, and tell us what, what you think that will help you do in the future and, and help you achieve your dreams. Um, we have excellent placement into medical schools. Over 90% of our students who are recommended to medical schools through our pre-med program get into medical programs, dentistry, um, nursing, um, physical therapy, medical schools, and 100% of our students who are recommended to law schools get into law schools. That's how well we do things. Now, we know we do that. So when you write the Why Transylvania essay, don't tell me that because I already know that part. I know that we have 46 majors or the opportunity to design your own. But tell me why that appeals to you. If you want to design your own major, what would you design? 
So that would be something that would be interesting. Um, if you have read about one of our professors, and we have really interesting professors who are doing amazing things, um, and all with the help of their undergraduate students, because we are undergraduate only. So all of the research that our professors are doing is assisted by undergraduate students. You don't have to wait for lab time for the, for the graduate students to get out of the way. Um, tell us why Transylvania. It does not have to be long. We want it to be honest, earnest, and succinct. We want you to be direct about it. Um, I just learned about you from a presentation that I, that I heard through uh, Mr. Canal's program, and I, I thought it sounded interesting. So that is absolutely fine. We just want to know how we got on your radar. Once you start putting your essays together, you're going to want to get feedback. You need to get feedback. Um, don't do this in a bubble. You're not in this on your own. So um, reach out to maybe your careers advisor or your school counselor. Maybe your English teacher would be willing to read over a draft um, or friends. And, and my caveat there is that who have good grades in English class. You want to ask those friends who love to read and write, not the ones who really don't want to be bothered with it. Um, you want to get some, some really positive feedback, some good feedback. You're specifically going to ask for proofreading help, not editing. Editing implies that they are going to change your sentences and change your structures and all that kind of stuff. You just want them to say, hey, I think you need a comma here, or that's not the your, your, your that you're looking for. Um, so just help, ask them to proofread and not edit. Now, notice that in those three bullets of getting feedback, I don't suggest that you go to family members. And this is not a, a, a hard and fast rule, but it's just a, a suggestion that your family members have a loving bias towards you. They are as concerned about your application as you are. They are very interested in you being successful and putting your best foot forward. But that said, they might be encouraging you to choose words that a 49 year old might use and not words that a 17 or 18 year old might use or a sentence structure or a paragraph structure. Um, so keep in mind that those of us reading on our side, we're used to reading um, essays from 17 and 18 year olds. We know what that sounds like and, and we, we love reading that. That's, it's just, it's fun, it's wonderful. But um, we also know what a 49 year old sounds like. So, so you might ask for some, feedback from your parents, but make sure that they are not trying to, to send you to a thesaurus um, for every other sentence. All right, here's some things to do. And I know there are a lot, of, a lot of things here. This is why you can't do this in half an hour. Um, you want to spend some time brainstorming. Again, if that blank paper really is daunting for you, don't start writing sentences. Just get some ideas down. Hand the blank paper to your siblings and ask them to write the ideas down. Um, just get something on the page. You can't do anything until you get something on the page. Um, if you have a word to, um, if you have like a spoken word, uh, I can't think of what the term is, but where you can talk to your computer and your computer writes it down, that's an easy way to get your ideas out. Just start talking to your computer and it's going to write things down. You can delete and edit later. Lots of drafts. Notice that I am asking you to read aloud to yourself. Now, all of these can be sort of rearranged in different ways, but you need to read aloud to yourself, especially when you get to what you think might be the final draft. Um, reading aloud makes your brain think about every word and every sentence structure. When you work with an essay, as much as you're going to work with this one, or your UCAS personal statement, you should do this for that as well, you know what's coming up in the next sentence. So when you're just reading it silently, your brain is actually skipping ahead. Oh yeah, yeah, this is the part about my physics experiment. This is the part about the lecture I went to. And, and your brain is kind of fast. Your brain is already on like the next sentence when you're still, your eyes are still on this sentence. That's not gonna help you proofread effectively for yourself. You need to read out loud. And it can be just in a, an empty room. Like I'm talking right now to an empty room. <laughs> I know you're there, but I can't see you. So you, you need to get comfortable doing that. Um, reading out loud will help you feel your sentence structure. If you pause, but there's no comma there, maybe that's where you need a comma. If you keep reading past a comma without pausing, maybe you didn't need one there in the first place. If you run out of breath, that's a run on sentence. So help yourself before you pass this on to, to others to, to get that feedback. All right, some general tips. 
this is kind of review from this whole presentation. We want you to write your own story for the common application. We want you to be honest and genuine. We want you to proofread a lot. Make sure you do that well. We want it to be conversational but formal. Again, it's a little bit different from that, that UCAS very structured idea. This is gonna be your story, so tell us in whatever way you feel you need to tell us. You need to think about your audience. I'm your audience for Transylvania University. I read probably maybe five applications a day. I don't like to read a whole lot more just because um, I like to give everyone time. I like to spend some time reading that and, and sort of looking things up. Um, but there are some universities that you might apply to where your admissions reader is going to be reading hundreds per day. So you need to sort of think about that. What, what, what can you give them through your story that's gonna um, encourage them and is gonna make them feel good about reading your essay? Make sure you stick to word limits and pretty much the Common App will cut you off anyway, so keep that in mind. Definitely draft in a Word document, a Google Doc, or don't do this on your phone. You need a keyboard and a big screen um, to, to type this up, to make sure you proofread, to run the spell check. Remember that you are smarter than your computer. So if you run a spell check and your computer's saying, I think you want this word, make sure, because you're smarter than your computer, make sure that, that that's the, the word you actually want. And then you're gonna take that final draft and you're gonna cut and paste it into the common application. Once you do that, please look through it again and make sure that the formatting came through the way you wanted it to. So some don'ts. Um, don't try to overshare, don't shock us, don't tell us something you wouldn't tell your grandmother. This is not the place for that. Um, don't try to be funny if you're not already. If some people are just you know, naturally humorous and it can come across in their writing, but sometimes it can't, so don't try too hard. Um, we're just trying to learn about you. We don't need to be entertained. Um, and then don't let other people rewrite, revise, or extensively edit your essays. So that's my presentation. Um, my contact information is here. I originally did a version of this presentation with Gianna Succi from Loyola University of Chicago's Rome campus. Um, so I'm you know, sending thanks to her uh, for, for putting this together and for all of her ideas. And so if you did have questions about essays, she's another source um, to ask as well. You could certainly um, email me or reach out with, if you have, you know, if you just come away from this presentation and brainstorm some six ideas, say, even if you never apply to Transylvania, shoot me an email, say, hey, what do you think about these ideas? And I'll say, yeah, this one sounds good. This one sounds great. What about combining these two together? Um, and you can just go from there. Remember that for the US admissions process, the admissions counselors that you, the universities hire we are here to help you. We are your advocates. Um, we are not trying to find reasons to keep you out. We are trying to find reasons to bring you in. Now, um, our current administration uh, in the White House is not helping with that right now, but um, we are working to, to, to get students back to our campuses. So um, don't get frustrated with the news that you're hearing from the US. Please know that we want you to be with us. We're going to do everything that we can to get you here. Um, and, and remember that we are your advocates. So no matter where you're applying or even where you're thinking about, just reach out to the admissions counselors. You can find our contact on all of the websites um, and ask questions. Be in touch. You know, let us know what concerns you, you have. So I think that's it for me, Mr. Canal. If um, we want to take some questions. Yes, absolutely. I uh, hope you can see me. Yeah. Right. Okay. Great. So uh, you can uh, you can kindly go ahead with the Q and A. I believe there are some questions posted, and I'll just go off again then. Okay. Where right. do, how do I find them? Yeah. Oh, there it is. It's in the bottom uh, right corner, in the Q and A box with the eight bubble. Yep. Got it. Thank you. Okay. We'll start with the early ones. Um, so one of the questions says, can you describe, describe what does formulaic mean? So what I mean with that, that's, that's in reference to the UCAS essay. And when you look at the UCAS website, they have a worksheet that basically tells you first paragraph should have this, second paragraphs, second, third, fourth paragraph should have this, conclusion paragraph should have this. They're very specific um, and it's very much an outline. So you want to make sure that you follow that guideline. If you don't, they're gonna wonder why you didn't because they were very clear about it. For the US essay, we're not that prescriptive. We, we want you to tell your story in your own way and in your own voice. Um, 
Uh, next question is, what are some of the questions that colleges ask for essay topics? Oh, okay. So on the, um, on the supplement, colleges can ask anything they want to. So uh, a, Stanford, a Stanford essay, supplemental essay is um, write a letter to your future university roommate. So write a letter to your future university roommate. I guess you're introducing yourself and, and telling something about yourself to someone that you're gonna be living with in a dorm. Um, the University of Richmond, uh, their mascot for their university is a spider. And one of their essays is, tell us about spiders. And that's it. That's the only guideline that they give you, tell us about spiders. But so what they're looking for is, um, so some people talk about Harry Potter, um, and the spiders that are in Harry Potter. Some students that are more um, scientifically oriented will talk about the, the arachnids and, and things like that. Some people might talk about their fears. So um, it's, universities are just trying to help engage with you and, and sort of see that we're trying to give you some opportunities to, to share some ideas and share your thought processes with us. Don't overthink some of those, like the, the tell us about spiders. Um, there's no like trick to that. It's just, they just wanna know, what do you think about spiders? So if you're scared of them, write that essay. Um, how long should an essay typically be? All of the essays in the common application will give you a word count. They will give you um, a max that you should, you know, a max word limit. Um, keep in mind though, if you are going to write the main common app essay and you know you're gonna write the additional information essay because of when you broke your leg and your grades took a dip, um, and you're going to write the COVID specific essay, and you're going to write a Y Transylvania essay, that's a lot of things for us to read. Um, so the shorter the better for some of those additional ones. Um, please don't just think that you need to keep adding words just to hit a certain length. Tell your story, tell it well, and be done. Um, should I include in my essay what career opportunities I plan to pursue after my studies? In the UCAS one, yes, definitely. Um, they want to know why that course is, why you're interested in that course and what that's going to help you do in the future. What, what are some goals that you have? Um, for the common application essay, the personal essay and the common part of the common application, you do not need to, to talk about your career opportunities. Um, that you never need to mention the course that, you're, that you want to study. Um, it can just be a story about you and, and something. You, you can, if that's where that essay goes, um, but you could also answer it in um, some of the technical universities are gonna ask you, why are you applying to a certain course uh, in the STEM fields? And so you might address your career um, thoughts then. And keep in mind that a lot of times during university, your career ideas are gonna change. And that's the wonderful thing about university. You go in, think, well, I was gonna be a, um, a journalist uh, I was going to work for National Geographic magazine and travel the world. So I'm still, well, I was traveling the world until March. Um, but uh, I certainly never thought that I would be doing what I do. I love it, but it wasn't something that I thought about, you know, when I was in university. Um, another question, from an admission and scholarship point of view, can you share how each item weighs in terms of importance? Transcripts, test scores, English scores, letters of recommendation, and essay. This is one of the things that's difficult about US application processes. Every single one of us is going to weigh those in different ways. Um, we are going to um, all look at your transcripts. We wanna know what kind of student you have been in the classroom. So that's why we're not as dependent on exit examinations as a lot of other countries are. Um, we wanna see what you were like in the classroom the whole time. Um, how did you contribute? What was what was going on? How were your grades? Did, you know, was there a little bit of this? Was there this kind of thing? What happened um, when you were in the classroom? And that's why we do look at your recommendations from your teacher and counselor as well. Um, but there's really all of those items that you mentioned, and that's great that those are on your radar. Transcripts, test scores, English scores, letters of recommendation, and essays. They might be in different um, places for each university in the U.S. So do the best you can on all of those and um, know that you are putting your best application forward and then leave it to us to sort out which ones we're gonna, we're gonna focus on the most. Um, you know how to tell your story the best and, and take your time to do that well. 
and get feedback and then um, and feel confident that, that you have shared and that you've worked hard coming up to that and that you've, you've shared your story well. Can a strong essay overcome slightly lower grades? Um, yes. It depends on what you mean by slightly lower grades and it depends on the university and it depends on what happened to so so what we like to think about with transcripts is is a trend so if your grades started off really high at the beginning of secondary school and they are going like this sharply down we're wondering if that's going to keep going once you get to university if your grade started not so great in the beginning of secondary school and that is very common a lot of people don't know what they're getting themselves into when they get to secondary school um, and so they might start here and go up then we're thinking that that's an upward trend and that things will start will keep going well for you when you get to university um, certainly an interesting essay will will uh, help us flesh out your application but we will be looking for if you have slightly lower grades then we're going to be looking for a little bit more information again we're not Certainly with Transylvania's process, with what we're looking for for our students, our community members, someone who's gonna be active in the classroom, someone who's going to be um, a, a, a active person in our community. We're not looking to figure out ways to keep you out. We're looking for ways to bring you in. And that means that we want you to be successful when you hit the ground here. We don't want to put you in a position where you're going to be um, struggling to catch up the whole time. We want you to be able to, to hit the ground running and, and be a, a strong student as soon as you get here. Um, let's see. Should I include in my essay what uh, covered that? Sorry. Um, from an admission and scholarship point of view, can you share how each, sorry, did that one too. I don't know why this is not coming down. I think the okay. next one is, can you share more information? Sorry, sorry to interrupt. There I am. Yes, okay. <laughs> I don't, my scroll bar isn't scrolling like it should. All right, it's still early. Um, can you share more information about Transylvania University in terms of classroom experience, campus life, and career success? So um, one thing that we like to say is that, uh, that, that we like to promote about ourselves is that um, within six months of graduation, 95% of our students are either in graduate school or in a job. Um, we have a very strong um, career and pro professional um, enrichment program. So right from the start, you can come into Transylvania, you can get a mentor to help you think about what a future career might be. You always have um, an academic advisor from the minute that you um, submit your deposit to join us. Um, you will be assigned an academic advisor. You can start talking with that person about what your goals are. Um, again, I keep coming back to this, but we are small. You are going to know your professors well. We have very small classrooms, um, class sizes. Luckily, our physical classrooms are big enough so that when we come back in the fall, we'll be spread out well enough. But um, our average class size is 15, and our um, student to teacher ratio is one to 11. 11 to one, sorry, 11 students to one professor. So we don't have any teaching assistants. Everyone who's teaching a class is a full professor and you have direct access to them. Um, that's one reason that we have such great placement into to law school, medical schools, graduate programs, and into jobs, because your professors are gonna write letters of recommendation for you, and they're not doing a form letter. They know you, they know you well, because you've taken multiple classes with them, you've helped them with research, you've seen them in the cafeteria, um, you've hung out with them in the, in the coffee shop. So um, it's a very inclusive and very, um, warm community. We are in the middle of Lexington, which is a mid-sized, very progressive city. Um, we are um, an open campus, so people from our community are walking through and we go out to volunteer um, and be part of our community. Uh, we are three blocks from downtown Lexington, so our students go downtown to do job shadowing and mentoring. We have um, theaters and art studios and, well, when they're open, um, concerts right downtown, um, all kinds of, of options nearby. The University of Kentucky is a major public research university that is about a mile from our campus. So some of our students will choose to, our, in our engineering track, students might take some classes or use some of the labs at um, Transylvania, or sorry, at, at the University of Kentucky. So there's a lot of back and forth there. 
Um, classroom experience, campus life. Um, yeah, we're, there, there are many, many things going on on campus. Um, we have students who live in Lexington who are from Lexington, the same city, but their parents never see them. We have so much going on on campus. Most of our students live on campus and the students just never go home. The parents have to come to campus to see their students because the students are so busy and, and involved in activities. We are definitely not a go to class and go back to your dorm kind of place. Um, can we explain lower grades in a certain subject and how we plan to overcome them? I'm a business major and I'm not strong in geometry, which is slightly lower than my math score. Absolutely, yeah, that's where that additional information is. Um, and what you're doing and how you're working on that and yeah, absolutely. And you might even, so one of the things, and you're probably going to hear this from a, from a different, um, uh, on a different webinar, is um, who you ask to do your teacher recommendations. You might be best served by asking a teacher with whom you didn't get top marks. You might ask a teacher to write you a letter of recommendation who has seen you work hard and struggle and come in for extra help and, and, and extra tutoring and retake tests and all that. Um, because that shows us more about you as a student than someone who just sails right through and gets all top marks. Um, so we would rather hear from a teacher who has seen you work through those struggles and, and be successful than someone who um, has just seen you excel in everything. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know anybody, I know very few students in my 20 year career that have, you know, aced everything. So, so we're certainly understanding that, um, that there are all types of learners out there and that, that, um, that does not deter your ability to be a strong student when you get to us. Uh, if multiple universities have the same essays, can we reuse the same essay and can you share some tips for doing this? Um, your, um, supplements so in the common app there's the common part of the common application and then for every university that you're going to apply to there's also the supplement transylvania university will never see the supplement that you send to the university of kentucky and the university of, Ken of kentucky will never see the supplement that you send to transylvania so it is possible to to reuse essays there yeah that's absolutely possible or some universities that have their own application that don't use the common app you could take your common app common essay and pop it into the essay that's required for that other university. Um, the trick is that, like I was explaining with the Why Transylvania essay, you, you really want to be earnest and honest about it, and you want it to not seem like it's, it's sort of by rote or something that you're using over and over again. Um, and one of the, the common problems that we see so often is when students reuse the same essay, they forget to change the university name within the essay. So definitely be very careful about that when you do that. Um, let's see. Where is Transylvania University located? Would it be a public or private and other details? Um, so all of our details you can find on um, www.transy, T-R-A-N-S-Y, that's our nickname, .edu. Um, you can find our cost there. We're, we're considered one of the best um, deals in U.S. private universities, but U.S. private universities costs are so high, it's, it's crazy. Um, but we do have excellent scholarships. Uh, your application for admission is also your... Um, application for scholarships. We have scholarships for international students that go all the way up to full tuition, room, and board. Um, so do keep that in mind that any university you're applying to, a lot of us that are private, um, we're going to have um, larger sticker prices. But that also means that we probably have a lot better discounts too and, and, and excellent scholarships. Um, and like I said, we're right in the middle of our city. We are um, 15 minutes from the airport. So uh, Lexington's airport goes directly to Chicago, New York, Atlanta, Dallas. So it's very easy to get back and forth from overseas. I do it all the time. Well, I did it all the time. <laughs> I'm hoping to get back to it soon. Um, how can students apply for the research and teaching assistantships on campus? So we don't have teaching assistantships because we don't have graduate programs. Um, you would be doing research with your professors just through getting to know your professors and talking to them about what you're excited and interested in doing. 
excited about and interested in doing. Some students will start their own research and the professor will help them. Some professors will say, I'm starting some research. I'm gonna need a few people to help me. Do you wanna jump on? Um, it's really up to you. Again, we are so small. You're gonna know everyone by their first name. Um, you will know the registrar by her first name. You'll go in and ask her about um, classes. You'll know um, the head of the, our academic center for academic and professional excellence. Um, you'll know them quite well. You'll be in there asking them about opportunities. We have study abroad. Um, it's really, we throw open all these doors and you get to choose what you wanna walk through. Um, we're not going to take you by the hand and drag you, um, but you have so many choices, you're really gonna make it your own. And that's, that's one of the reasons that we did start this self-design major. Because we have so many choices and because our students are um, Renaissance men and women who wanna try different things and have so many talents, um, they really are able to um, design their own majors that are just wonderful and, and help you um, decide what you wanna do. What are the Form I-20 requirements and scholarship opportunities your university would provide? Um, great that you know about the I-20. So um, once you apply to Transylvania or any other university, you have to be accepted and send in your deposit, basically saying Transylvania is it for me, um, one and done, and this is where I'm going. You put in your deposit, and then we have a um, designated student officer, a DSO, who will work through um, your, doing your I-20 for you. So we're gonna ask you for financial documents that can support, and these are all documents that the, the federal government asks us to, to get. So you have to show that you can support your education for four years. Um, and again, we will be working with you. You'll have my WhatsApp, <laughs> my cell phone, and our DSO is Denise, and you'll have her information as well. We will help you with all steps of that to make sure that, that it works for you. Um, so that's, that is definitely down the road. I'm glad it's on your radar, but um, that's sort of a question for further down the road. And when you're proving for your, for your I-20, you have to show that you can afford um, the university. Your scholarship will be part of that, you know, package. So, so that's, that'll help with, um, you know, having to pay for university. What academic support will I receive as an undergraduate student? We have an excellent tutoring center. We have um, peer support tutoring, but we also have, um, I think, three full-time professional um, adult tutors as well. We have a dedicated writing tutor. Um, so every single paper that you write for any, for any professor, you could take to the writing center and have it proofread and have get some feedback on it. Um, the writing center is, the writing center and the tutoring center are on a walk-in basis. Uh, in the basement of our library. It's a very welcoming and open space. So you can use it just to study if you want to, or you can meet with friends there to, to work on projects and you can meet with tutors there as well. A lot of resources in that area. Um, most of our students do realize that even if you're a strong student in secondary school, um, university is just a, a different, um, it's a different animal, it's a different dynamic. And so even our strong students from high school do need to, um, sometimes readjust their thinking a little bit for how you write papers to a university level. And it's wonderful that, that you're thinking about accessing those programs. It's, they're free, um, they're easy to, to um, access, and we definitely recommend that everyone should use them. These are great questions, you all. These are, these are wonderful. Um, Campus safety and campus precautions taken dur due to COVID-19. So um, in March, um, we shut down our campus at the end of our spring break. And again, sort of things were happening so quickly in March. Our students went on spring break. We encouraged them to stay on spring break for um, a, a second week. And then we ended up closing down our campus completely. Um, we allowed students that didn't have anywhere else to go, uh, were able to stay on campus. Again, because we're small, we can, we can react and, and readjust as, as necessary quite quickly. We do plan to open in the fall. We're gonna have very specific um, guidelines in place, of course, uh, masks, social distancing. Um, we won't have buffet uh, restaurant style at our cafeteria. Um, there, there are gonna be a lot of things in place. We have a lot of specifics on it, again, at our transy.edu. If you go to our blog, there's an update on a regular basis. And again, as you're gonna find out with most universities, all of that is, sometimes changing on a weekly basis just because we get more information um, or things shift a little bit. We, we are expecting to have students back on campus, 
Um, we can't wait to see our students. We miss them so much. It's just, it's not the same without them. It's, it's, it's oddly quiet around here. So, um, you know, we are working hard. And again, because we are small, we are able to really keep a handle on things and, and make sure our students stay safe. That's our number one priority is, is the, the safety and health of our students. Um, what would be the advantages of a US bachelor degree compared to the UK? Ooh, that's a good question. So um, it really depends on you as a student and you don't have to know the answer to this about yourself right now. The UK degrees tend to be three years. Now Scotland is four, but they tend to be three years and it's a direct entry into a, a specific course. So if you wanna do physics, you're applying directly into a physics course and you're gonna do physics for three years. In the US in general, um, our degrees are, our undergraduate degrees are four years and you usually don't go directly into a course. You go, you spend of those four years, let's see if you can see my hand here, of these, of these four years, you're going to do two years of what we call general education requirements. Even if you're going to be a physics major and you know you're going to be a physics major, you're going to spend two years doing a foreign language, um, math, some other sciences, um, some social sciences, some literature, um, and then you're going to spend two, about two years on your physics major. And mixed in there, you might be doing some job shadowing, you might do a study abroad. There are all sorts of things. You could do a minor, you could do two majors and a minor, you could do a major and two minors. Um, it's all up to you. With us, you could even design your own two majors. So um, there's a lot more flexibility, I think, with a U.S. degree. But if you really know what you want to do, and I actually, like, so I graduated from Transylvania University, and I had an English degree from Transylvania University, but I was so interested in English literature, and that was the only thing I was interested in, that I might have been well served to go to the UK and only have studied that. It's kind of what you, what you want to do. I do appreciate that I was able to try so many different things at Transylvania. I even, my first job after Transylvania was in Japan. Um, I immediately moved to Japan and started working there. So that was a wonderful opportunity that, that I had never imagined that I could have. So it really depends on you as a student. Um, and sometimes the, um, the classroom dynamics and the campus dynamics are different between the UK and the US. So um, a lot of the US universities were gonna tell you a lot about our community and our campus and our campus experience. Um, and UK universities are going to be more focused on the courses and, and you know, what happens inside the classroom. They are moving more towards campus experience, again, because they have international students coming over, so they need to live somewhere. Um, but that's a, that's a great question to ask, and it's really something that you can sort of take a look at your interests and, and your, um, you know, what you want to do in university and where that's going to get you for next steps. Um, how does housing work at your university? Would you be able to share meal plan information for vegetarian students? Yeah, absolutely. We have a wonderful, we just started with a new um, uh, provi food provider uh, that's local and, and helps uh, local farmers and, and companies um, by, by buying their produce and uh, products from them. Um, so they're able to cater to any diet. Um, if you send me an email, and it's that ashaf at trancy.edu, um, I can send you the specific menu information. So I, I'm gluten-free, um, and they are wonderful about helping me with that. Um, there are many, many options. Again, this fall, things are going to be different, I think, at any U.S. university where things are going to have to be prepackaged rather than you being able to sort of pick and choose a buffet style. But um, they, are, they have wonderful support for any different kind of diet. Most universities do just because there's so many different needs that we understand students have. Did I, did I get them all, Mr. Kunal? Is that? Yeah, I think you did. And I'm going to quickly launch a poll and uh, come back on as well. If you can see me. Can you see me? I can see you. Yep. Okay. There you are. Thank you. Um, yeah, we're just going to have this poll. Students, attendees, please uh, fill up this poll. We're going to wait for another 10 seconds uh, to allow you time to fill this up. So kindly fill this information. So five, four, three, two, one. And I'm also going to share the results with everyone so everyone can see it.
Great. And um, yeah, thank you so much, uh, Miss Alice. I also wanted to make a quick point uh, before we uh, cap for the day. I actually know uh, Gianna Suchi really well. Uh, she uh, was at Temple University and I'm an alumni of Temple University. So Wonderful. just a quick point. I saw Gianna's name. I know she's in Rome right now. So yeah, such a small she, is, she is awesome. So um, students, do feel free to reach out to Gianna. She's, she's wonderful, very helpful, um, me as well. And both Gianna and I, and actually most of the university um, admissions counselors you will interact with, even if you never apply to our university, we do want to help you. We understand that our process can be confusing and daunting, and, and we really want to help you as much as possible. So please do reach out with any questions. Thank you so much for that, uh, Ms. Alice. We truly appreciate your kind time and support, and especially, as I said, uh, because it's so early in the morning out here. To all the attendees, thank you so much for participating so actively in this session. Uh, it was really nice to see your participation and also heartwarming to see many of the questions that you had. And I'm sure uh, Miss Alice also truly enjoyed her participation with you. Having said that, there's a cap for today. And this recorded session, I want to remind all the attendees who are students, parents, and counselors that it will be shared with your school so that other students uh, can view it uh, as well and will be uh, posted on our social media platforms. And uh, we'll be also sharing with other schools in the region. Uh, that your schools are located in. So uh, that's a cap for the day. Uh, uh, thank you once again. Please join me in saying that to uh, Miss Alice Schaff. And uh, we truly wish you a wonderful day and uh, look forward to keeping in touch with you. And thank you once again for your kind time and support. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.